Big baits, big hooks require heavy hook sets. I just want to take the time today to kind of address some issues that I see pop up from time to time on social media. I get a fair amount of messages about it, and that is people running into issues with not hooking up with fish when they bite big soft baits with beast hook style hooks. I'm gonna try and do it without getting too preachy and say kind of like my way or the highway stuff because every angler is different, every angler has different circumstances that they're working with. So I'll just kind of try and skirt around that issue of like wh what works for me. After doing it for quite some time, you can, you can maybe see like through videos where maybe the, the angler isn't as successful as they could be because maybe there's something in their technique that they're doing that they can improve upon. But I also don't want to be the armchair quarterback being like, ah, oh, you could have hooked it if you did this. I mean, I wasn't there, I don't know, but there are some key fundamentals in fishing big snagless style baits with beast hooks that I think people should put into practice. I mean, it's helped me tremendously, so I would think it would do the same for a lot of other guys out there. First thing you gotta kinda consider, first thing I took into consideration is this is a lot of plastic you gotta move and there's not a lot of gap here. Now on my baits, I do design them so they have the internal air chamber. So it allows the bait to kind of collapse around the hook right there. And other guys have their own ways of implementing it so that you get some gapage going, whether the hook hangs lower, whatever. But either way, you have to consider that it's a lot of plastic you got to move. So with that, that means you're going to really have to lay the hammer down when you're setting into these fish. In my experience, it's not like fishing an exposed hook bait. Now I'm talking about exposed hook soft baits or exposed hook hard baits, where it's a lot more forgiving, where you feel that bite and you can just swing away. Even on exposed hook soft baits, I don't just swing away. I, I reel into them and I, I lay it down. Hard baits, a ah, little bit different story. You can reel into them. You don't have to hit them as hard. Uh, there's there's a lot of variances there but from my experience i've found that you really need to reel into these fish pick up any of that stretch in the line and when you start to feel the weight of the fish that's when you start driving that hook so as you saw in the clips that opened this video up i use that as an example across multiple different fish of you just see me reeling and then hitting them reeling hitting them and if you really start patterning that out, it's reeling into them to the point where the, it almost starts loading up on its own. And then I start setting. By the time about halfway through, that hook is already being penetrated. And by the time I get to the 90 degree, I'm bottoming out. I don't want to be bottoming out way back here. If I'm doing that, I'm really increasing the chances of me losing that fish. The goal is to drive that hook home. And I have found, which doesn't seem to make sense, but just through my experiences, with these big soft plastic baits with just the beast hook, it seems like the fish hold on to them for just that much longer. You have that extra time to kind of bow and hit them. I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's any like real proof in that. It's just my experience. That's how it seems. You have to like really, you know, keep that in mind when, when choosing to go with a tool like this. It's kind of easy to sit back and get frustrated if you're getting bites and you're missing them. And it's easy to kind of blame it on a specific bait. And I say this about mine because, you know, guys will complain about it. I think it's obvious. I'm just being transparent. They can't get a hook into the fish. But I see them talk about it with other baits. That can be frustrating. But sometimes you kind of got to look at it from a, a zoomed out perspective, maybe through your own video of looking at yourself, kind of analyze what you're doing. Are you swinging on them too early? When you swing on them, are you seeing that you're bottoming out way back here? That may work on some other exposed hook style baits, but I have found time and time and time again, you need to be bottoming out when you're at bow that 90 degree, however it be, you already feel the weight of the fish halfway through your hook set. You're already feeling it. So that extra one is boom, and you're yanking that fish 
it's something that kind of has to be taught. You have to be mindful of it when you're actually fishing. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think once you do it once or twice, it kind of clicks. It's important with these baits that you really let the fish get a hold of it and you wind on them and hit them. You know, something else that you have to kind of consider with these baits is your ability to put this bait where no other bait can go. And it's easy to kind of write it off if you're getting bites, but you're not hooking up. That gets super frustrating. But take that step back and just think, would I have gotten those bites with any other bait? Would I have been able to put any other bait in that spot? That's going to get you more strikes. And in, in my opinion, it's better to be getting bit than not bit at all. If I'm able to put this bait where I can't put any other bait, I've just increased my chances tenfold, twentyfold, I don't, I don't know. There isn't a place on a lake now that I don't have full confidence in that I can put a bait in there and actually get bit and get that fish out of there. That's a game changer. It's not for every place on the lake, but it definitely increases your odds of getting to those hard to get fish. Simple. So it's extremely valuable. I've trained myself enough at this point that I have that, a little bit of that patience to kind of let that fish take the bait. So I don't really miss that many fish at this point. I think in the earlier stages when I first started fishing them a little bit more, I was kind of doing that like amateur move of bump, swing, bump, swing, bump, swing. And you're playing a game of like rubber band. It's, a, it's awkward. It's, it's weird. But if you make those changes, then you start hooking up on them just a general kind of rule that I found with with these baits or even just other soft baits is not swinging on that first contact with the fish. I'll put a clip up so you can watch it that will show obvious contact and you just remain calm, you get ready, there's contact with the fish, reeling, reeling, boom, oh, reel, 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 you know another strike is gonna come Real, 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 real. Boom! Then the real hit takes place. It's, it's very odd behavior, but I found that happens more often than not with these snagless style baits, these beast hook style baits. There's a lot of initial contact. I don't know what that is in the bass behavior, but there's the initial contact and then the actual commitment to them. And that's what you're waiting for. If I'm swinging on that first contact, in my mind, I'm not applying the technique correctly for these baits because if I swing on that first contact, that means I didn't reel up into the fish. I would have known there was no fish there because I would have reeled into it. So if I get that first contact and I just whoop, and there's no fish, I've kind of just blown my cover in my mind. That's not always the case, but it seems like it happens more often than not. So. I try and just remain true to the retrieve, get a little bump. I just do a little little reel check, Zoop. no fish there. Okay, keep it going, keep it going. I know that next bite is coming. When it's gonna come, I, I'm not totally sure. It may be three or four cranks after, or it could be right in front of the boat. I don't know. Just remain true, ride it all the way out. When that next bite comes, the actual commitment, that's when I, really dive in and and wow it takes some practice it takes some patience but i think it will benefit a lot of anglers game if they can start applying that to them fishing the baits that's why i think it sometimes it's great to watch your own footage back because you may think you're doing something when you're really not Analyzing your own behavior on the water can lead to a lot more success. Hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on it, my take on it. I don't, I don't want to talk in circles about it. Uh, that's just my perspective and it, it doesn't just pertain to my baits. I hope that this will benefit some guys out there that they're willing to hear it, understand that I'm not trying to preach to them of like, you can only do it this way. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know if there's been any issues you've been having with the Beast Hook style baits and not hooking up. Maybe there's been things that you're doing. Maybe there's things that you've experienced that might benefit other anglers. It's kind of a little community in there where guys want to better their fishing. I mean, I think that's why we're all, all here. Please like, 
share, and if you haven't already, subscribe. That helps the whole channel grow. That activity, that engagement on the content puts it through the algorithms, recommendations, you know the deal. It just helps the brand grow overall. And if we can build a, a larger, more positive community where guys are sharing the content and openly discussing ideas, knowing that, hey, we're all gonna have fault. Nobody's experts in this. It's all individual experience on the water. But sharing those experience will help us all grow. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'm out.